Question, can you chat with your document? Let's explore this by creating a document chat application. This beginner-friendly tutorial is divided into chapters for easy reference, and you can jump to whichever chapter you would like at any time. We'll be using React for the front end, Flask for the back end, and ChatGPT generative model. By the end of this tutorial, you will know how to build websites using React and Flask, as well as building applications on top of generative models. I'll guide you through hands-on coding, and I'll advise you to take your laptop and code along with me. So, let's begin. To get started, create a project folder and open it in Visual Studio Code. You will need to create two subfolders within this folder, one for the back end called Server and one for the front end called Client. After that, open a new VS Code terminal and navigate to the Client folder using this command. Inside this folder, initialize a new React application. After the installation is complete, you can launch the React development server and access your application in the browser. Now, let's move on to the next step. We'll install the necessary front-end dependencies. We require React Router DOM for page navigation, Axios for sending API requests, and Bootstrap for styling. To do this, open a new terminal, navigate to the Client folder, and install these dependencies using this command. Now that we have everything in place, let's start building our application. For this project, we'll require two pages, one for uploading documents and another for chatting with them. To get started, create the Pages directory within the SRC folder, and within this directory, create the two pages we need. The next step involves customizing the app component. Start by clearing its content and create a new functional component within it. Import the necessary dependencies for routing and styling. Additionally, import the pages you've created. Set up the routers to access your pages, then create basic functional components within the created pages to test our navigation. You'll see that the navigation works perfectly. To set up navigation links between the two pages, we'll start by creating a navbar component and integrating it into the relevant pages. Begin by creating a components folder and inside it establish a navbar component. To save time we can utilize existing code snippets available online. Open your browser search for Bootstrap navbar and select the link from the official Bootstrap website. This code will serve our purposes effectively. Copy the code and paste it into your navbar component. You can omit the form section as it's unnecessary for our objectives. Now convert this HTML code into JX. If you're still getting familiar with the process, don't worry, there's a comprehensive tutorial available to guide you through it. Click the link above to access it. Let's assume that all the links in the navbar point to the home page at the moment To incorporate the navbar component into the chat page component, import it and use it within the return statement of the chat component. Additionally, include bootstrap.js in the app component to enable the navbar's toggling on small screen devices while allowing it to expand on larger screens. Once you've completed these steps, you can view the results in your web browser. You'll notice that the navbar is properly configured capable of toggling on small screens and expanding on larger screens, ensuring a seamless user experience. Now, let's set up our actual links. We'll need two links and our application brand. We'll use DocChat as our brand name and configure the links to navigate to different pages. Additionally, let's add the navbar component to the upload page and test it on the web page. As you can see, our navigation is all set and ready to use. Before we continue, I'd like to challenge you. Pause the video and attempt to add a footer to your web pages using the same procedure. Feel free to let me know in the comments section how it goes. The next step is setting up your upload form. 
To set up the upload form, you can follow a similar approach as with the navbar. Begin by searching Bootstrap File Upload Form and integrate it into your upload component. Remember to add a submit button to the form. Now let's add an onSubmit event to the form. We'll create a function called Handle File Submit. Here's how it works. The first line of this function prevents the form from causing a page to reload. Then we use form data to collect all the form data, including the uploaded file. Next, the fetch function is used to initiate an HTTP POST request, specifying that the request type is POST. Subsequently, this line sends the file data to the server. Finally, this line processes the server's response, which is expected in JSON format. Now let's configure the back end to receive the uploaded files. To get started, open a new terminal and navigate to your server folder. Our first step is to set up a virtual environment for our application. Ensure that you have Python installed. If it's not installed on your system, you can download the latest version from the official Python website, python.org. Now let's proceed with the virtual environment setup. Begin by installing virtual envy using this command. Once virtual env is installed, create your virtual environment. For this tutorial, we'll name it myenv. To activate your virtual environment, use this command. This process ensures that your backend environment is properly configured and ready to receive uploaded files. The next step is to install Flask, which is the core library for creating web applications in Python. Additionally, we'll install Flask Cores, an extension that handles cross-origin resource sharing cores in Flask. This extension enables your backend to accept requests from your React application. We'll now create a server.py file in the server directory to handle file uploads. In this initial step, we'll set up a basic Flask application to verify that everything is functioning as expected. First, we import the Flask class which is crucial for creating web applications. Additionally, we import the course function to enable cross-origin requests. Next, we create a Flask app instance. This line sets up the foundation for our web application. This line enables cores for the Flask app to handle cross-origin requests. We then define a get route for the root URL, specifying that when this URL is accessed, it should call a function that returns a simple hello world string as the response. The final step involves checking if the script is being run directly, and if so, we start the Flask development server. This action allows our app to listen for incoming requests on the default host and port. To access this application in your browser, you can use this command which generates a URL where your application is running. Copy and paste this URL into your browser to confirm that your backend is ready to receive requests. Now it's time to set up the route to receive files from our React application. At the beginning of our script, we import the request module, which enables us to access various aspects of incoming HTTP requests, such as form data, query parameters, headers, and files. Additionally, we bring in JSONify a function that transforms Python dictionaries or objects into JSON format, making it ideal for generating JSON responses in HTTP. We also import the OS module, which will be useful for directory management in our application. Next, we create a post route upload file. Under this route, we create a function called upload underscore file for uploading files to our server. Let's break down what this function does. This condition checks if there is a file in the files sent with the request. It ensures that a file has been included in the request. This line retrieves the uploaded file from the request data and assigns it to the file variable. This condition checks if the file's name is empty, which indicates that no file was selected for upload of which we return the error. These condition checks if a file was successfully received in the request. This line specifies the directory where the uploaded files will be saved. Here, we create the specified upload directory. This argument ensures that the directory is created if only it doesn't exist. This saves the uploaded file to the specified directory. We will save our file with the namedata.txt 
so that it will get overwritten every time a new file is uploaded. After successfully saving the file, this line returns a JSON response to confirm that the file was uploaded. The next step involves updating the proxy settings in the package.json file of our React application. We'll use the base URL for our backend. Additionally, we need to restart our backend server. To do this, you can use Ctrl plus C to terminate it and then start it again as before. If you'd like the server to automatically restart after making changes, you can set the debug mode for the backend to true. Now, let's verify if we can successfully upload a file. Open your console to check the response from the server. As you can see, we receive a successful response from the server. To confirm that the file has been stored on our server, you can observe the upload folder, which has been created, and inside it, you'll find the data.txt file. It's quite a straightforward process, isn't it? This demonstrates that file uploading is functioning smoothly. In the next step, we will install the llama index, which will be responsible for indexing our document so that we can interact with it. Please ensure that you are in your virtual environment. Use this command to install the llama index. Once the installation is complete, you'll need to obtain your OpenAI API key. Here's how you can do it. Sign up at aplatform.openai.com.quote-navigate to API reference, and then to Authentication. Click on API keys, and then Create New Secret Key. Give your secret key a name. For this tutorial, let's name it DocChat. Click the Create Secret Key button to generate your key. Copy this generated key and store it in a location of your choice. You can paste it into a notepad for easy access. It's worth noting that OpenAI provides new users with a free $5 credit, which is sufficient for this tutorial. Next, we are going to index our document. This is the function that I have created to achieve that. Let me explain what it does. Here we specify which directory our index files will be stored. We then create it if it doesn't exist. Next, we import the GPT vector store index and simple directory reader for reading and indexing our document. This line creates a GPT vector store index object from the documents variable, and this one stores the created index in the specified directory, which is index in our case. This line checks if the index directory is empty, implying no index was created, hence we return an error. Otherwise, we return a successful message. To try it, let's call this method from the root URL then start our server and try to create an index for the uploaded document. As seen, the successful response is returned. You can also check the index directory has been created and there are some files in it. So let's call this method after a successful file upload so that the file can be indexed immediately after it is uploaded. Now let's delete these directories and attempt to index our file during the upload process. Ensure to restart your backend server if you haven't set the debug mode to true. As you can observe, we receive a successful response, and when we check, we find the same directories created with files inside them. It's a straightforward and efficient process, isn't it? This demonstrates how easily files can be uploaded and indexed as part of the process. So, What's next? The next step is customizing our chat component. To save time, I've created the user interface for the chat, and I'll provide you with the link to the source codes. Uh, let me walk you through the UI that I've developed. First, I imported the message component. This component accepts props as input, um, including the position of the message bubble, which can be left or right depending on the user's role. It also takes the message property, which contains the text of the message. Next, I imported an SVG for the AI assistance image, which is displayed within the chat. I also imported the CSS file for the chat component and defined some functions for opening and closing the chat window. If you need the source code for this component right away, please check the video description for the link to the GitHub repository. Here's the output on the browser. 
As you can see, you can toggle the chat window, allowing for interactive communication with the AI assistant. The next step we're going to do is implementing the chat logic. First, let's create a chat messages state that will hold the chat messages for this application. It is basically an array of message objects with their positions. Remember to import useState at the top of the page. In the chart body, let's map the chat messages to display the messages. The next thing we are going to do is setting the onClick event listener to the send button. Let's then create the corresponding event handler function. Here we select the text input and then read its value. We return if the value is blank. We reset the input value to blank. We then define the data constant that holds the previous messages and the current prompt. We then use fetch to post this data to the back end to be processed by our LLM so that we can receive the response. With response data, we define the messages constant that holds the previous messages, current prompt, and response from the generative model. We then update the state for chat messages and scroll the window up so that the last message can be inside the viewport. Apologies, you remember we installed Axios, right? But we haven't used it at any instance. This is because we have used fetch instead. You can try implementing the same using Axios and let me know how it goes in the comment section below. Let's now customize our backend to receive this data and process it. There is this function that I have set up that is used to receive the request from the user. First, we import the necessary modules for loading the storage index and querying it. Here, we check if there are any available indices set. If not, we return the error. We then decode the JSON from the front end and grab the prompt and chat history. We then load our index and set up our chat engine. There is this function that returns the custom prompt that is used to direct the LLM on what to do while answering your questions. You can pause the video to read it and internalize it so that you can customize yours too. There is this function called getChatHistory that reformats the previous chats for the LLM. After building the chat engine, we then chat with it and send back its response to the user. Next, we set the route that will call this function. It is now time to test our chat application. First, we need to find a perfect document to test with. Head over to Google and search for stories.txt. Look for this link and click it. You will find many documents that you can use to test your application. Let us go with this. Copy all the contents, open your favorite editor, paste it into it, and save it as a TXT file. Head over to your application and upload this document to be indexed. This process takes time for larger documents. You have to wait. As you can see, the indexing has been successful. Now, let's find the perfect questions that we can ask our assistant about this document. As you can see, the AI responses are tied to this document. You can pause the video and read the responses. Congratulations! This is the end of our tutorial. Thank you for sticking to the end. By now you know how to build websites using React and Flask. You also know how to build applications on top of generative models. The source code for this tutorial is linked in the video description. You can fork it and use it whichever method you want. You can improve it by adding security features, adding a database for memory, and making it accept other document formats like PDF or structured data like Excel and JSON. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel to help it grow and get notified whenever new tutorials are out. Until next time, bye-bye.